Welcome back to the program. Egyptian authorities have hung five men convicted by a military court of killing three military students in a bombing in 2014. Four of those executed had been sentenced by a military court over the attack that killed the cadets at a stadium north of the capital, Cairo. This was during violence that followed the ousting of President Mohammed Mercy of the Muslim Brotherhood. The fifth person was hung over a criminal matter. This is the second reported multiple execution of convicted Islamist militants. A week ago, Egypt hung 15 men accused of deadly attacks in the Sinai Peninsula. The Israeli government has issued a notice for thousands of African migrants to leave the country or face imprisonment. Local media reports that the migrants will be given up to $3,500 to leave, having the option of going to their home country or going to Uganda or Rwanda. But if they don't leave, the Israeli authorities have threatened that from April they will start jailing them. Most of them say they came to Israel to seek asylum after fleeing persecution and conflict but the authorities regard them as economic migrants. The order, however, exempts children, elderly people, and victims of slavery and human trafficking. James Jimmy Rugami is a semi-retired DJ in his 60s with an enviable collection of music on vinyl acquired over 30 years. He sells the records out of a small store inside a busy meat market in Nairobi, Kenya. His customers are few, but they come from all over the world searching for his unique trove of music, which spans the greats of Africa's roaring 70s when African genres like benga, sukus, and disco rules the dance floor. As Vinyl enjoys a revival, Jimmy says he knew he was onto something all along. In the 80s, James Jimmy Rugami was the DJ who played an eclectic mix of music spanning local banger and Swahili pop to Congolese dance and Afro-Cuban classics with a touch of Lionel Richie. Jimmy, now in his 60s, doesn't play the disco scene anymore, but since 1989, he has amassed a vinyl record collection that would be the envy of any music enthusiast. He now spends his days here, surrounded by rows and columns of old records bought or traded from far-flung locations across Africa that he got to by car, by bus, and by boat to places like Zanzibar, which he says had the best jars. I couldn't stop collecting records. For some reason, I was always perturbed by piracy, and I always hated anything that is not original. As you know, vinyl is the most original way of playing music. So I kept on buying and buying everywhere. Every time I found records, I, I couldn't resist the, the urge of buying. Nairobi used to be East Africa's entertainment hotspot. International record labels such as Polygram and EMI signed bands from Kenya, Tanzania, and the former Zaire, such as Orchestra Virunga, Daudi Kabaka, and Simba Wanyika. State-of-the-art recording studios and a vinyl press located on the outskirts of Nairobi released diverse genre of music, the most characteristic pop sound being Benga from Western Kenya and the Congolese rumba sound of the 70s, known as Sukus. But most of the major record labels closed shop as Kenya's economy struggled in the 90s and training and rehearsal spaces became inadequate. Recording studios and mastering facilities moved to South Africa. Demand for vinyl in Kenya and in other parts of the world has since given way to cassette tapes and then CDs, then online digital sources, and only a few collectors with the right players still buy his records. As you can see today, all music shops are kind of closed. It's because of uh, technology which we can't fight. Because uh, you guys only download music from the internet and uh, you don't buy anymore. Jimmy can go a whole week with just one customer, but he says he doesn't really care about the money. There are vinyl lovers that have become Jimmy's good friends, and he still DJs at family events, sometimes at schools, sharing his history in music with the young and old. Jimmy says he's excited by a rekindling of love for old music and sound, especially among the youth, 
In fact, global sales of vinyl records have reached their highest level for 20 years and could be on track to return to the glory days of the long player in the late 1980s, according to music industry findings in the United Kingdom. A lot of Jimmy's friends and family thought he was crazy when he spent all his savings on records in 1986, but 30 years later, having educated his six children through this business, he says it has been worth every minute of ridicule. I have been labored insane by lots of folks because of, because of sticking to vinyl. Some even come back much, much later and tell me, oh, I think whatever you're doing is cool. The same people who could say, what's wrong with this man? What's this is keeping crap and we're going ahead? Well, I'm also in digital. So I'm relevant. Jimmy's store, number 570, is hidden away in a popular meat market where only those that are looking will find him. He also restores and sells vintage record players. Fans of vinyl say it offers a richer sound than its digital successes, despite the occasional crackles caused by scratches or dust on the records. A group of elderly women in Johannesburg, South Africa, are using their fists to fight the aches and pains of old age. With two weekly training sessions hosted by founder of the A-Team Gym, Claude Mafosa, the grannies get to relieve their ailments in the boxing ring. Boxing is a tough sport, but so are the grannies of Kasmo City a suburb in South Africa's economic capital, Johannesburg. Aged between 75 and 80 years old, they box to fight the aches and pains of old age and keep fit. Granny Miriam Bari says being in the ring keeps her feeling young and energetic. The advice I give to other grannies like me is that they should leave the old way of telling themselves that they are old and they can't do anything but to try their best. Just because you are a granny does not mean you need to burden yourself with that word, granny. You need to wake yourself up and show that you're a granny with life. Their boxing trainer says the grannies started out by doing aerobics as part of a special program introduced at a gym five years ago for the elderly. We're doing fitness. So our Coco, they were interested to also do fitness. They saw my gloves and then they just tried them on. And then since from there, they never stopped. The gym offers two sessions a week that include cardio and boxing exercises like sparring and hitting the punching bag. Jermina Maluleka is 76 years old. She joined the gym in 2012 when she moved to Cosmo City after being diagnosed with cancer. Boxing, she says, has given her new hope for the future. The gym has helped me through my illness. When I was starting out, I had a problem with my feet. I used to have swollen feet. But now, I don't have that problem anymore with my knees or my legs. That's because the gym helps me a lot. They're taking care of their grandchildren, cleaning the house, some of them. So, most of them, we thought that boxing is the one that will also make them relax, make them think, make them young again. Members of the gym have become close friends, something that has helped many of them deal with the loneliness and isolation that often comes with old age. Doing it in the old age. Well, that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jopia Rogers.